Hello again, I'm Bill DeYoung from the St. Pete Catalyst. I'm coming to you, as you can see, from the sunny shores of beautiful, exotic Tiki Gardens. Today on the Catalyst Sessions, we're talking to the wonderful Brenda McMahon of Gulfport, Florida. Hello. Hello, Bill. Good morning. A beautiful day today. Beautiful day. Uh, Brenda owns the Brenda McMahon Gallery. She's a ceramic artist who does amazing work. She's been on our program before. And if you haven't been over to see her gallery, you need to go over there. Um, Wait till the show's over, maybe, and then go over there. So we're here to talk about the first Friday Art Walk in Gulfport, Brenda, which is coming back this week on Friday after, uh, well, obviously, a, a few months away. Um, the Gulfport Merchants Chamber is, is sort of the, 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 big, uh, the big specter of business behind all this, but you, you are kind of an architect of this new redesigned Art walk. Tell me, tell me what's different and you know what you've done. I know it's themed and it's juried. What's all that about? Yeah, um, well, it's interesting because the, um, the pandemic allowed us to sort of stop the art walk. It was against our will, but the art walk took a big pause. And we really took a lot of time to work on the redesign of it. Um, and the whole philosophy behind the redesign for the Gulfport Merchant Chamber is First, the Gulfport was one of the first art walks in the region. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it was back in 1993 where it began. And it was really, it was, it's an unusual in its time. And then of course, everybody has art walks and there's incredible art being created here. And so we felt the need to pull it back, redefine it, freshen it up, make it a little bit more contemporary, and then kind of have a new coming out party, so to speak, where we show our new um, design. So like you said, Bill, one of the things that's new for, for the event is that we're having quarterly themes. So that the theme is kind of a neat way for artists to take a concept and see how their work fits into that concept or make something relating to the concept or they already do. So the theme for our debut, we actually had a different theme because we were planning it before the pandemic. And as we went through that time of being closed down, we thought metamorphosis, art for hope and healing. This has been such an incredible time of metamorphosis for all of us. Some has been um, really challenging. Some of people have dealt with health issues. Some people um, have really had a lot of quiet studio time that they ne never would have otherwise gotten. And so they got to dive into something that maybe they couldn't. And so it's an open theme of what is metamorphosis for you and what has the past six to eight months been like in your experience? And one of the things about art walks is artists have an incredible way of communicating visually. And so it takes everybody out of the head, kind of brings it down into the heart and talks about issues from that place and maybe opens a closed mind from that place or shows a perspective you thought, oh, I never would have thought about that. So it's a great way to have a dialogue about current events, about personal issues, about family, through art. So that's that, one of the wonderful things that art does, yeah. really. It's a communication vehicle, yeah. It is, it is. And it's just a reminder of that. So when we have themes, it's a reminder, to like, let's have fun with this and let's kind of delve a little bit deeper into what we've all been going through. I mean, rarely at a time has everybody experienced the same thing, and yet our experiences of this issue are all quite different. Yes. And so therein lies an opportunity for dialogue. So you, you, how does it work, Brenda? You issue a call to artists, you say, here's the theme, come up with something if you like, and submit it, and yeah, essentially, the process, somebody says, yeah, this is perfect. Exactly. Essentially, what we did is that that call for artists and what we were looking for, because we didn't really want to control it too much. What we wanted to say is, what does metamorphosis mean to you? What does art for hope and healing mean to you? So there's one artist, Jack Providente. He happens to be our our guest juror this time. His hope and healing was about the paradise of Florida. And so he does these magnificent oil paintings not unlike your backdrop, where he just does these beautiful visions of Florida, people on the beach, or just that, those sunsets and all of that. So that's his place of hope and healing, mm -hmm. right? And so then behind me, we have our uh, featured artist, Gila Davuti, and her piece is called, um, uh, oh God. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I know, that. And, I know that piece. Give I me know. two seconds, and I'll tell you that it's called uh, Grief and Compassion. 
Grief. Thank you. Grief and compassion. Yes. And so Gila has a really interesting background. She grew up in Iran and she, so she knows grief and compassion from her country's history really well. Um, And so what she did is she was watching the Black Lives Matter marches and she was just feeling heartbroken for the pain and the suffering on all sides. And out of that experience of watching television in isolation in her home came this painting, Grief and Compassion. And so- Yeah, we're looking at it now, you can see it on the screen there. Yeah, and it's a stunning piece and we loved it because it completely represented the feeling that we're trying to get. And so there's a lot of different feelings about all of the things going on in our our culture right now. This is such a, a beautiful, compassionate look at it. Um, and so, you know, her piece became that great statement piece. Um, there's another artist we have in, in the art walk and the way he interpreted metamorphosis is he's a jeweler of 35 years. He had his own jewelry shop in North Carolina and he is creating metamorphosis. He's taking old clarinets and turning them into magnificent earrings and pendants. And so the metamorphosis there is from a material to another oh, material. Yeah. It's interpretation, so, but uh, devil's advocates, we're hanging clarinets from our ears, aren't they kind of big? I mean, well, yes, that, it would be a little heavy. <laughs> I, I, I'm not getting it. So. Oh, so being a jeweler, he takes the wood of the clarinet and so he carves these beautiful scrolled pieces from this um, black wood that they make clarinets in. And wow. so there's just these magnificently carved, gorgeous earrings. They're very light because it's that nice wood. Um, and so, you know, he's a, he's a clarinet player and he actually started doing it because he was buying an old clarinet and um, it was no longer good to play. And he said, well, then my jeweler mind tuned in and said, well, if you can't play it, maybe you can cut it up and carve it and make jewelry from it. And thus began his metamorphosis. How many artists are we talking about? So we've got a really beautiful jury. Um, it's 26 artists and we have a really nice range from our jeweler and our juror, both of whom have been painting and doing uh, creative work for 45, 50 years. And then we have a handful of, I'd say six or eight up and coming, rising, emerging artists who are doing wonderful work, who have such a fresh, young, new um, signature on the voice of the the young people of today. So this is fascinating. Tell, Tell me how some of them interpreted the theme. You know, give me some more examples. This is very interesting. Yeah, so, so one, of our, one of our artists, a- Amy Howell, she's, um, sh- she's one of the few abstract artists. And she just really, so abstract work is really taking color and movement and energy and expressing it on, on the canvas. And so she, hers is a little less defined in putting words to it, which I love because it's really like, it's the experience of seeing it. And when you see mm-hmm. it, it's what you feel. So that metamorphosis of taking color and shape and eliciting emotion. So where, you know, regularly you would see these colors in a different context and it wouldn't do that. So that's, that was her way of doing it. Um, there's another young woman, uh, Karina Cole, I think I'm pronouncing her name right. Mm-hmm. She does this beautiful, um, I believe it's acrylic painting montage of all of this energy, which is really about my interpretation of it is her personal metamorphosis so that the changes that young people go through in life from their 20s to their late 20s to their 30s out of college into the real world trying to make a living as an artist so that kind of metamorphosis so it's so cool because we all metamorphosize over our lives that's all yeah. we ever do is change change right? is the only constant it's, it's the only constant. things yeah yes yeah. And so, so combining that concept of met- metamorphosis with art for hope and healing. And so healing and hope comes in different ways. Some people really like to dive into the energy of the time, which could be hard. Um, and others like to say, yeah, that's there, but my healing is in, you know, the landscapes and in the colors and in the sunsets. So we've got, we've got the whole range. To your mind, Brenda, why was... Well, obviously, everything changes the only constant. Everything's changed in these fab six months we've just had. But yeah. you said that this was actually being talked about 
before the pandemic. So yes. wh why was it necessary? I mean, was the art walk just getting, uh, frankly, a little stale? It was the same thing every month. We need to, you know, bump yeah. it up to the next level kind of thing? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, what happened was the, um, I was invited to join the Gulfport Merchant Chamber. So I'm the head of the Arts Committee in the Gulfport Merchant Chamber. Mm -hmm. And I've been living in this community for, I think, 14 years now yep. and I've come to the art walk and quite frankly it was an art walk it had become an art walk in name only so that there was very little art in there and so I came to the table and I said what if we change the art walk we do a first Friday and then town also does a third Saturday they called them both art walks mm -hmm. and they were essentially the same um, format and so I said well what if we actually make one an art walk and then that third Saturday, we maintain the integrity of the original concept. But since there's not art per se in there, let's turn it into a festival fair makers market kind of thing. That would thing. be the indie fair makers market. Exactly. My notes here. Yeah. Exactly. And so okay. what we did is yeah. we separated the concepts and we said, let's really have an art walk because Gulfport is filled with incredible artists. And I would ask all these artists, do you ever show at the art walk? And they'd say, no way because it was out of context. You can't have fine art next to handmade soaps. It just doesn't work. And it's, there's nothing wrong with handmade soaps and there's nothing wrong with fine art, but you just have to kind of separate the two so that then the audience comes and when they know they want to come to an art walk, they're there, they're enjoying the art, it's wonderful. And then they go, let's go to the maker's market. There's live music, we have live music too, but there's, mm -hmm. there's fun things, there's affordable items, there's gift items. There's and handmade soap. Battery, yeah. All of that. Yeah, so. yeah. That's, um, just thinking about it, what you're talking about it, it, is like you brought the Art Jones project to Gulfport as well, which is more of a, a studio uh, tour. And yeah. um, that was your innovation. I mean, can, can we talk about that? And th this seems to pair with that pretty well. Well, Bill, it really does. And I think if you were to look at my overall concept, and I, I admit as much I'm a full-time artist, I'm a gallery owner, and I'm an art activist, that I really believe in the art community. But one of the things I believe in is to show the elevation of the arts so that Art Jones was really designed as a professional studio artist tour. Yeah. So that I wanted to invite people who were really proficient in their craft, had been doing it a long time, were really quite... Um, competent and, and acknowledged and even award-winning in their craft to come into this tour. So that was my first concept. And then my second concept was, it's one thing to see art on the street and in a booth and in a gallery, but there's nothing like going into a studio and seeing the tools and oh, yeah. the paint on the floor and, yeah. you know, kind of being in the dirt of it. So that was Art Jones. So when we came to Art Walk, I wanted to kind of open it up further to say, well, this is for the professionals who want to come, but it's also for the emerging artists. It's for the mid-season artists. It's sort of like for anybody who's taking art as a medium to have a conversation, right? Yeah. And then the third tier would be the maker's market. You know, people that are just getting in there and trying new things, stained glass, really kind of fresh and young and uh, wired jewelry, you know, all sorts of things. It's just really cool. All of it is in that big category of art, but then there's different um, qualities and levels of so, it. So what you're saying is that it all kind of gotten blobbed together it did. Over, over time. I mean, it it's did. a sim simplistic way of saying it, I suppose. Yeah, blobbed is a good word. <laughs> um, you know, you, you pointed out that you've been here for 13, 14 years now, um, and we've talked about it before. How long did it take you to feel a part of the artistic community here and were they accepting of you and and let's carry that all the way through to to now i mean was there resistance no it's worked this way for so long brenda why would we want to change it i mean is everybody is everybody along for the ride i guess uh i think i think they are now i i have to say that i was very quiet when i got here i was just a studio artist at my studio behind my house. I did mm -hmm. art shows all across Florida, all across the country. I come downtown, you know, I'd go out to dinner, have a glass of wine, have a cup of coffee. Yeah. And about four or five years ago, uh, or maybe six years ago, I was like, how come there's not a studio tour here? There's so many artists, there must be a studio tour. And there was one at one point and I interviewed the folks and I thought, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna do my own thing. It's not a community event, it's, it's, a, it's an invitation only. And so I started that. And then everybody was like, whoa, this is awesome. 
And so they really liked that. And then when they asked me to be a part of the chamber, that's really where I kind of came out in the community and people mm -hmm. got to know me because, well, look what she does. She's been an artist all these years. She does the art tour. So then I said, well, what do you think about redesigning Art Walk? And everybody was like, we've been wanting to do it for years. So it wasn't like <laughs> it was my idea. I think they just needed somebody who would take it and run with it. Oh, sure. It tends to be my MO. I'd like to talk with you about, so, uh, so there aren't still people whispering in the background going, oh, this is going to ruin Art Walk. What's she doing? And, you I know, have no idea. Okay, maybe <laughs> there are. It's not meeting my ear, so we'll it's, see. It's for another conversation. Maybe yeah. never. Yeah, I, but I'd like to talk about about Gulfport itself because it is so heavily artistic, and I mean, it's like you look up the word "quaint" in the dictionary, and there it is. Yeah. You know, good, good and bad both. But there was this big announcement of Gulfport Strong this yeah. week, what they call the safety awareness campaign. Sort of when the mayor came out and said, "Look at all this stuff we're doing here, devoted to the arts. The arts is is a." It, as I understand it, a major economic driver in Gulfport. Yeah. Can you explain that? I mean, why? I mean, it, how, it, did, how did this happen, I guess? <laughs> it, it, it completely predates me. It's, it's really an amazing little community. I know when I found it and I stumbled upon it, I drove down this beach boulevard and I had no idea where I was, but I said, I don't know where I am, but I love this place. It had an energy that was intangible. And then as I got to know the place, I was like, oh, no wonder I love it. These are my people. It's my tribe. <laughs> and there are, there are a ton of artists who live here, who work here, maybe work other places, but they reside here. There's an open-mindedness and a creativity to our community that has been here a very long time. That's why we were the first art walk in 1993. Yeah. A group of artists got together and said, hey, let's have a little event. And then they called it Art Walk, and then it evolved from there. The one thing about Gulfport that's interesting, everybody knows as Gulfport weird and, and Gulfport artsy. Our whole region has really become quite sophisticated with the arts. St. Pete, the whole area, the, the, um, the Tampa Bay region here. And Gulfport too has kind of risen up with that so that we've always had a very strong art base. But I'd say in the last seven to 10 years, People moving in, I mean, I have these conversations and I'm amazed at what people have done for a living with art. I mean, there's some very famous people here. A lot of people, times they don't want people to know they're here, but they're really that's quite fair. accomplished. Yeah. And fair. including our beloved John Prine. I mean, he's the most famous of them, yeah. right? But he's- Well, God rest his soul, you know. Yeah. He, exactly. And, and he's not the only one. And so- I think that there's there's a vibrational force in Gulfport and it's off the beaten track. So you really have to kind of find it to find it. And now we are being discovered and and there's a lot of beauty in that. And, you know, there's some trepidation for people in that as well. But I find that the people that come into the gallery and the reason we're having the art walk and the range of incredible artists, many of whom are from St. Pete, um, it's just such a good range of, of, um, of talent that everybody's coming in with such love and joy appreciating it. Is it, to play devil's advocate, because yes. one, of, one of my roles over here, um, is, is because there's a lot of talk about St. Pete tipping too far in the other direction. It's like, mm. if, there, you know, if too many people discover how cool and quaint and beautiful and artistic and funky St. Pete is now, that'll tip the scales in the other direction and it won't be anymore. Is there a fear of that in Gulfport? Like if too many people discover this place. I think it's a quintessential fear of any cool place in any town around certainly our country. I can't speak for the world, but I think there's always a bit of trepidation about that. It's like, we all want to grow and we want people to know so we can all make a living, but we want to stop it. So it doesn't grow too far. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's um, quintessential gentrification. It happened in it the streets of Brooklyn or those old neighborhoods. Greenwich Village is a perfect example of it. So I think we all as humans struggle with wanting it and being concerned about it. And so I feel like with that Gulfport Strong, one of the things we're saying is we are a small contained community. We are off the beaten track. And because of that, we can hold things close to us. So we can maintain social distancing. We can wear our mask. We can say, regardless of what the state wants to do, 
we're going to hold a line here because we want to get through this pandemic healthy. We, we all behind all of us stands the people we're protecting, you know, yeah. and so we wear the mask for the people we love as you should, you know, and so because we're small enough, we can do that. And I think in terms of controlling growth, there's, there's talk about that in town too, to just to be careful and thoughtful and, and, and discerning about that. Well, it's funny. I, I was born and raised in St. Petersburg. I left for a long time. And Gulfport, to me, maybe it, maybe I was a kid then, and I'm a, a kind of an old cantankerous man now, but Gulfport seems pretty much the same as it did when I was a kid. I mean, it, the, the restaurants are better. You know, there's more art. Um, but, the, the, you know, the casino's always been right. It's, it, it's, it, it, and and that's, that's very charming to me. It doesn't well, feel like the 1960s, for God's sake. That's not what I mean. Yeah, but it, it, it still has that 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 charm to it. Hasn't and I, you know, it's is that's ephemeral. That could go away. It, it, it's really true, and it has both because it is incredibly charming. And people that just come here, it's old Florida. It's yeah. the houses are small. There's none of these big McMansions. There's none of these high rises. There's a few that have been here for decades. But mostly, with the exception of maybe some flood zone regs where houses have to be a little higher because of that, it has this incredible small town feel. And so by the looks of it, Bill, I think I would agree, it, it is very much like it always was, and that's what many of us fell in love with. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the streets here too, there's an energy and a vibe. I've been here 13 years, and I feel a distinct difference from when I first came here to now, in fact, I would have never opened a gallery four years ago here. Wow. So something in the vibe has changed that I felt like I could be supported here. I could make a living here. And before it was a little too funky for me. I didn't, I wasn't sure it would work, you know, cause I've been thinking about it for many years. Well, you're right, we're on that point of the, of the curve now where it's yeah. like uh, everything's aligned. Yes. You know? And hopefully, yeah. hopefully it won't go too far in the other direction if it doesn't exactly. many, many years from now. I want in our last few minutes really want to kind of recap uh, Friday's events. Uh, yeah. It's five. Is it five to eight or five to nine? So the Gulfport uh, First Friday Art Walk is yeah. five to eight. Five we to eight. have, um, as I said, 26 artists up and down the street and we're socially dist distancing everybody. So we have clusters of artists. Um, We've got live music everywhere and it's free live music. So I have live music in front of the gallery. Sumitra Cafe has live music there. Behind Stella's there's live music. Down the street by the casino there's live music. So people can meander up and down the streets. Masks on. If you don't have a mask, we have volunteers giving masks, giving directions. There's washing stations. We've kind of really covered all of the, the things about the golf court strong, be safe, be aware, be respectful. Mm -hmm. um, with this air of we are officially open, we're so excited to be back. The artists are so excited to have a venue to show and share and talk and sell. So we're just super jazzed about it. Five to eight this Friday. That's October 2nd, folks, depending on when you're watching this. That's if you're watching this on October 9th or something, you missed it. Yeah. See it. We'll see you next month. But um, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, it's such a pleasure always speaking with you. Thank you, Bill. You too. And, um, we'll, we'll check in with you next time and uh, see what's changed. Okay, good. I look good. forward to it. And all Thank the best you. for Friday, Brenda. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.